Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. One of our favorite guests is Ted Ryan, who is Archives and Heritage Brand Manager for Ford. He does such a great job because, let's face it, the automotive industry and automotive history, it's all about history. And it it really, you know, evokes, you know, where you were when that vehicle came out. You love lo- looking at this stuff. You love remembering things maybe you saw uh, back in the day. And Ted, uh, well, you've got a big project here, uh, and it's basically a vault of really cool information uh, from Ford that that has been brought out and made available to the public. I mean, we always love the way Ford helps us as journalists. With you're, you're trying to tell a story, you need B-roll footage, you need uh, you know stills of old old uh, vehicles, but now this is open to the public. I guess tell us how how this whole project got started. I mean, what what was the idea behind it? This has uh, been a two year labor of love. Our team has been working to uh, digitize our collection for the past five years or so, uh, but we wanted to find a way to make it available to the general public. Uh, the picture on the screen right now is actually one of our. Uh, Uh, video vaults and that's showing some of the archives so we began with our digitization project and and but the goal was always to be able to share it so um, we had a team meeting almost two years ago I'm giving you some inside pool here and at that team meeting I said we're going to do something so that a kid writing a paper on a Mustang in California or a media journalist or the Mustang Enthusiast Club they can all get stuff that they've never gotten before so we digitized 3,000 plus photos, every Ford and Lincoln and Edsel vehicle between 1903 and 2003. And then we, more importantly, we digitized the brochure collection. 3,500 plus brochures have been digitized and placed in the Ford, Barrett, uh, Ford Heritage Vault. Wow. wow. I want- Complete with the color selections and all that. Oh, wow. man. Everything. And that that's part of the the joy of the the, the site is... Uh, geeking out on some of the different vehicles. I was uh, looking at a 59 T-Bird brochure the other day. Wow. And that's that's the year that you could do all the color variations. You could have a roof that was black and the, the paint color that was a different color and you could do all of those different variations. Um, and it's just fun to be able, it's a trip down memory lane to be able to see all of those. And plus, uh, I did a T-Bird enthusiast uh, demo uh, the last week, and uh, they were going crazy. And then the Lincoln guy, when I did the demo for him, he said, great, I'm going to download every brochure. I'm like, you don't need to download them all. They're all here. You can get them when you want them. It's in the cloud. No need to uh, no need to yeah. <laughs> download terabytes of information. I mean, uh, what are some of your favorite things you uh, found, Ted, like that you were surprised that you talked about the 59 T-Bird? I mean, I... I think in on the uh, the Ford media side, I just found it interesting. There was a Ford um, brochure on the 1958 uh, taxi cabs with the yeah. Ford mile, mileage maker six and all yeah. the cool features there. Just the level of information in these things was huge back then. Some of the more interesting ones, the recreational ones were amazing. Uh, you should have flashed that photo up earlier of the station wagon with the camper on top. Yeah. Well, that was what I came out of a recreational brochure. Yep. And we had others like that as well. Although I will say for your listeners, if you're trying to hit the site right this very second, uh, it's down. Uh, we got killed by traffic the first day and a half in our vendor and despite me telling them, hey, this could be really popular, they were not ready for the million hits they got in the first 15 minutes. So uh, <laughs> they are in the process, even as we speak, I just got an email moving it to a, a bigger server farm to, to be able to uh, satisfy everybody who's trying to hit the site. So Ted, they, what, what, is, content. what is the site URL so people can go there it, it it, is once, Ford, it gets, yeah. once it gets going? Yeah. <laughs> FordHeritageVault.com is the site URL. So if you, I just did a search on Google. If you just put in Ford Heritage Vault on Google, it's the first one that pops up as well. So uh, it was it was so frustrating because it was working this morning and uh, I was so excited. I was doing another radio interview and it's working and we're walking through and he's downloading a brochure. And I was going to do that with you guys, but uh, unfortunately it went down just a few minutes ago as they're moving it. <laughs> well, uh, it might have been me uh, downloading the entire <laughs> vault <laughs> on my other computer here. I, I'm not not saying it is. I'm just saying well, it could be. 
It's got uh, this, you know, it guys, it's so people love automotive history, as you said, Fred, leading in, they love it. I mean, I've gotten emails from uh from Jim Farley, our CEO, uh, who sent me a sardonic one saying, thanks for breaking the internet, Ted. Uh, now, now go fix it. <laughs> and then I got one from Edsel Ford who said, Ted, you built a site that's so popular, you can't keep it going, uh, which is true. It is so popular and we can't keep it going, but we will. And uh, you're showing some of the screen grabs now of how it's going to look and, and how it's going to work. Uh, and if you'll notice, everything in there is downloadable. Wow. Well, you can download yeah, it for free. Just, Everything just is like the, free and downloadable. Just like the media sites where we can download uh, really high resolution photographs, which is right. just terrific. Uh, so if I want to download a, a 50 Ford business coupe, um, that's, that's uh, I'm going to do that because that was my first car. It is most likely there. I will say there are some gaps in the collection. I, I don't have my notebook next to me, but I did the Lincoln uh, collection. And uh, for Lincoln, like in 1955, I'm making it up. We may not have had a Capri. We may have only had a, a, a Cosmopolitan. So it's just, right. there, there may be individual models that we won't have in there, uh, but we're going to commit to filling those gaps over time. Plus, this is just the first step. Uh, my team is meeting uh, as soon as we get it stable. We're going to start adding in the concept vehicles and the, the wow. vehicle yeah. clay images. And there's not a single oh, picture of a Ford facility in there, but we want to get the Rouge and Highland Park and Willow Run and then add our World War II images in there. So there's a whole lot more to come. In. Well, and Mercury. We didn't. Have, we haven't done anything with Mercury yet except the brochures. So uh, we'll get Mercury in there as well. Well, you know, the thing about this is they're free to download. I assume you can print them out and you can make some incredible wall art <laughs> out you of them. They're high quality. They're, uh, most of the uh, scans are 600 to, uh, uh, well, about six 800 DPI. Uh, the one thing is, and on the front, there's a warning saying it's only for personal and editorial use. So in right. other words, the media can download anything. But it says any commercial use would have to be approved. So uh, I hope that people won't get too excited about making coffee cups or T-shirts and selling them on Etsy but, uh, but, using our, our images. Yeah, but but if you wanted to download it and you wanted to get a blow up made just for your yes. own use, that would be fine. So that's fine. No, no, uh, that's yeah. great. That's amazing. I mean, to I, imagine you talk about World War II images, planes com coming off off the line or or anything like this. It'd just be beautiful wall art. I, yeah. I, I talked to a dealer. One of the dealers is going to set up a kiosk in his dealership so that as people are killing time in the dealership, they'll be able to peruse old brochures and old images. I, I thought that, that was a brilliant that's idea. A brilliant idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what have yeah, you I, discovered, I, I, uh, Ted, that was a surprise going through all this stuff as, as an archivist and that you must have just uncovered something like, like we were talking about. Before I don't have it right at my fingertips here, but the uh, station wagon with the rooftop tent and the shower on the side—that's right out of Overlanding, uh, twenty 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 two now. But that that was from uh, from the fifties, I guess. Um, well, one of the things I discovered is that we made really big cars in the seventies. They were land yachts. When, oh yeah, when you get to the seventies yep. and you you see a Continental uh, Mark IV or Mark V, it's uh, enormous. The other thing that was interesting to me is there were not as many brochures from uh, the 20s and 30s. I mean, essentially it was a Model T, but still there's not, uh, you know, and then in the 30s, you have those varieties. We Our collection was weak on the brochures in the 20s and 30s. So it's really strong after 1950, uh, but we had some gaps early on. Uh, the Mustang, the multi-vehicle brochures. And the other thing, too, is I was uh, telling my staff, it's like, I think we could teach American history using nothing but these brochures because you see fashions change, styles change. Uh, everything changes over time. And, and you can see that evolutionary growth uh, of the auto industry and of, of people in general uh, by looking through these brochures. Yeah, I was looking at the uh, one from the uh, late 70s couple of it was like a multi-model brochure a couple of yeah. things take takeaways it reminded me of uh charlie's angels because they had the pintos and the mustang twos yep. <laughs> all the cars they drove <laughs> and then i was surprised that the first generation bronco lived on until 1977 by that time it was 
pretty old, old looking compared to the rest of the lineup. You know, that's actually a sad tale. Do you know why it lived on? The the second generation of Bronco was canceled. It was there. There were two varieties. One was called the short horn, and one was called the mid horn. Those were the code names for them. Uh, Dick Nesbitt was a designer working on them, and uh, he shared the drawings with me. But during the uh, Arab oil crisis and the the renewed focus on uh, catalytic converters and mileage and this and that and the other, uh, the second gen Bronco was killed in uh, 1974. Or it was going to be the 74 Bronco was going to be second gen, and it was killed in 72. Would, That's why that first generation went all the way till 78. Will you have pictures of those vehicles that were never never released? Down the road, but yes. Very cool. We'll be right back with Cruise Control. Stay tuned. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We are talking with Ted Ryan, who um, has an incredible job, archives and heritage brand manager. He has a, a big success on here of this new site from Ford. They very generously have put a tremendous amount of photos and um, all kinds of brochures. And it's less, how much time do you think you'll be spending on this? A lot. Um, (laughs) I'm going to be, first, I'm going to download every Ford I've owned, which is. (laughs) Yeah, I I would do that. Quite a number. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, then I'm going to go after the GT40 information. Yeah. I- um, and then, and the concepts, once they come online, because uh, Ford had some really cool concepts. Uh, I just found out yesterday that Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was a Ford. That's news to me. I didn't know I, that one. I at the, I was watching the movie. I hadn't seen it for fifty years, but I was and I was looking at the credits at the end, and it said vehicle, uh, vehicle construction, uh, thanks to the Ford Motor Company. Oh. So I want to research that and find out. Okay, what did Ford do there? I'm going to research <laughs> that one too. Our LA uh, department uh, and I have a good relationship. I've been doing a whole lot of research on James Bond uh, uh, Ford vehicles over time. I'm going to add Chitty Chitty Bang Bang to that list. That's Yeah. I mean, of course, I, now I've got that song stuck in my head. So no, I no. <laughs> and you're, I, and you're I apologize warm. for that. But see, now it leaves me and goes to you. <laughs> yeah. so. Ted, uh, we were talking uh, before the break that it not only will be production vehicles on the Ford Vault site, but it will be vehicles that we talked about the that that second generation Bronco. They designed it, but then the situation changed business wise, and they didn't do it. That's interesting that they're going to put those up there as well. Well, the well the day is me. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's interesting that you will put them up there as well. <laughs> you know what the goal is on this site, and from the very beginning, day one, it's to share content with our fans and enthusiasts, whether it's good, whether it's bad. And yes, the Edsel's in there now, uh, so they're. I just curated a collection of 150-ish Edsel photos and all the Edsel brochures are there. But but you have to be able to share and you have to be open and transparent. And that's what the goal is. So uh, a couple of categories are going to be difficult, but we're going to tackle them. Like motorsports, you have all the different third-party logos on there mm-hmm. that might make it so they couldn't be downloadable. And once again, so we'll, our philosophy of everything free and downloadable may preclude some motorsports from going in there. It will preclude any ads from going in there where we can't put ads on there because we don't have the rights to them. The talent rights will have expired. Uh, So if the site is going to remain free and downloadable, it's going to make sure it's going to make it so that it's mainly going to be images of vehicles and or employees and or buildings that we own, et cetera. So the other big collection is we just finished scanning 60,000 Ford of England negatives. And uh, I've got somebody who's working now curating the complete library of every car Built by Ford of England, wow. and that's going to be exciting as well. The console and the and yeah, the, Capri. Uh, what about all the trucks? Is that a separate entity? Or? Separate entity. It's coming now. The F series are in there now, but we really just focused on the F uh, F one, F one hundred, F one fifty, and F two fifty. Bronco. Uh, the brochure wise, we did get up into the sixes and sevens. Uh, 
but photo photographically, we focused on the passenger vehicles rather than the work vehicles. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it's just amazing stuff. Uh, and, and once again, you can download these things. You can print them out as long as you're not selling them. Uh, if you're using it to hang on your wall. And what a beautiful way to decorate your office with all this. Uh, this Ford is the only manufacturer, I believe, that has done this that I can think of. Maybe more um, will follow now once they see your success. The only U.S. auto manufacturer that's done this, but I will say Mercedes has a killer site uh, uh, for their historical materials, and I have some old press releases on there as well. And uh, but U.S. auto wise, yes, we're uh, we've got the largest collection. Chevy does, or GM has some brochures online, but nothing uh, approaching the thirty five hundred that we have. Um, and uh, uh, Stellantis has a smallish image library. Um, but, you know, keep in mind, Ford didn't have anything until Thursday. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, good point. But, but hopefully other automakers uh, will follow this lead. And once again, the goal is to, when we sat down, we said, okay, if a student writing a paper, a media uh, journalist looking for a last second image or fact to fill out a story, right. a casual right. fan or an enthusiast, those are our four categories that we're gearing it, this up for. What what can we give them that they want? Uh, and I think particularly with the brochures are more for the journalists and the enthusiast. Uh, and then the image library is, is for the student and for the casual fan. And if you use these, like, do we have to credit them or is it, no, so no. it's uh, what do they call that? Open. Yeah. Uh, open uh, co uh, creative comments. It's, yeah. Like, like yeah. just as inside baseball, when we use stills that people see during the show, they're provided. Hey, you're talking yeah. about the vehicle so you can show the vehicle. And that's, that's, kind of how it yeah. works. Great stuff, uh, Ted. I, I mean, uh, I've worked on some similar projects, not, not this big, but uh, it's just the amount of material. It must have, it must have taken you a long time to do this. It's taken two years and it's been a labor of love. And uh, keep in mind too, that you know, you're talking to an archivist. This is what I do for a living and the ability to be able to share our collection. And the rest of my team feels exactly the same way. is exciting for us. You know, this is, this is what archivists love to do. We, we collect, we preserve, and we disseminate historical material. So we've collected it, we've preserved it. It's, you know, uh, when you were showing some of the pictures in the archives, uh, those negatives are actually stored in, in uh, chilled coolers that we cool it down to 38 degrees. And wow. that wow. helped the negative last hundreds of years. So uh, wow. the, we have, uh, he's showing some of the photos of the archives. We have uh, 30,000 square feet, 16,000 uh, cubic meters of uh, our cubic feet of, of paper 2.5 million photos and hundreds of thousands of, of video titles wow uh, there's some broncos so in the archives here that was going to be the for the bronco launch in in 2020 but unfortunately covid uh, uh wiped it out all the media were going to be invited to the archives and we had curated a display of the bronco through the years it's just a cool looking place. Well, the archives, they look like a yeah. bunker or we'll something. We'll hold less. on for the next party. <laughs> uh, yeah. I want to cut. Uh, how, how deep so far have you gone into the world war two production? Uh, you know, the, all those pictures of the, the bombers coming off the assembly line at every hour. And yeah. Photographically we've, we've scanned quite a bit, but keep in mind in 1956 Ford donated a large portion of its uh, photographic and paper collections to the Henry Ford museum. Uh, so that world war II collection is a split collection. We have portions of it and the Henry Ford has other portions of it. Then we donated all of our moving image footage, all of the films to the national archives. So if any, if you're, uh, uh, lesson, Fred, if you're bored one day, go to National Archives or, yeah, or yeah. type in National Archives Ford Motor Company Film Collection, and you can watch all these amazing uh, films. Ford paid to have them digitized and, and um, by the oh, National Archives, and you can watch great. these great movies on the production of uh, uh, planes during World War II or, or uh, the building of the Rouge prior to World War II. It's a fantastic way to kill time on a boring conference call. <laughs> you can get Man. lost in history, yeah. Uh, Ted, once again, what is the uh, website? Uh, we know you're having a little bit of teething yeah. pains here, but you'll get them sorted out. Yep. The website is uh, FordHeritageVault.com. And as Fred mentioned, uh, uh, our, we, we broke our server. Or the the uh, enthusiastic Ford fans broke our server, so we're having to move it to a, 
a bigger uh, server farm to, to get it up and going. And I will guarantee you the site will be better next weekend than it is this weekend, but forwardheritagevault.com. Yeah, very good. Ted, we always enjoy having you on the show because uh, yeah. you have that passion for this. And we, we share the passion. We just don't happen to have, have all those things that are fin- – maybe we do now, right, Les? <laughs> so, oh, we, oh, we're going to have it, I guarantee you. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you listening to Cruise Control. Make sure you check out that site. Make sure you check out our site, cruisecontrolradio.com. Time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We'll see you down the road. Bye.